All right, guys, we're gonna do an oil change on my 2017 Julia. Uh, you can use ramps or you can use jack stands, but I do suggest the ramps for this. Uh, one thing though, you have to put two by four to extend the ramp. Unless you have a ramp that's sort of long enough for the front bumper to clear it, that's fine. But I suggest a two by four underneath. All right, guys, I'm gonna pop the hood and turn the car off. I uh, I suggest a five to ten minute ride before you do an oil change. Have everything nice and warmed up. All right, guys, I'm gonna pop the hood and uh, I'm gonna remove the filler cap to avoid, avoid any type of suction that there would be. You know, it lets the oil drain out much faster and more fully. It's not a big thing, but it's a small detail that helps. All right, guys, this is everything that you're gonna need here. Uh, I use Zero W30 as that's the only oil you should be using in this engine, the four cylinder. It's uh, Fram oil. Uh, it's not the recommended Chrysler oil, but it does have the API SN and SP certification, which is needed for this engine. Maybe next time I'll use a higher quality oil or a more expensive oil, but it's fine as long as you change it at the right intervals or ahead of schedule. Like for this, for every 5,000 miles, I plan on changing the oil. And for the most part, that's what I've done in all my other cars. A recommendation I do have though is to use a high quality oil filter. All right, this part right here is pretty self-explanatory, but uh, a suggestion I do have, or this more what you have to do is to do the oil filter first. So take the oil filter off first and then remove the drain plug. So this car came from Carvana. This is probably like the only negative part of my whole experience was that they lied about the oil being changed because I only put 2,500 miles on it and the oil is never going to get that dark in 2,500 miles. You know, and why I say lie is because uh, the oil light was on, like the, the change oil, oil maintenance recommendation was on in the dashboard. And uh, also, I, you know, I stuck my finger in the valve cover and then checked how dark the oil was and it was black, so. So when you put the drain bolt back in, you want to put it all the way in as tight as possible without putting any pressure on it. And then you want to do a quarter turn. That's all you need. Uh, we're gonna get the oil footer ready for installation. So you need to pre-lubricate the oil footer so there is no dry start on the engine. So we're gonna pour the filter, fill it about halfway. It's gonna soak it up a little bit. So fill it halfway and it'll soak it up and then pour a little bit more and back up the halfway. You wanna make sure you get all, all the little holes on the top also. So, so the, the filter material soaks it up. All right, and then you want to get your finger and rub it around, rub the oil around the rubber seal on the top to prevent the rubber seal from binding when you torque it down. All right, here we go. We got the drain bolts in, so we're going to do it basically backwards. So drain bolt first and then the oil footer. You want to make sure you got the threads lined up when you put the oil footer on. Sometimes it's a little tricky. And also that's why we don't fill it all the way up because it, something is going to drip out. And the oil filter, you want it on tight. Like uh, some people say it's like just hand tight, but it's hand tight, but it's tight. You want it tight, hand tight. Uh, to get enough grip on the oil filter, you want to use a rag or a paper towel. Uh, rag, I feel like you get a little bit of a better grip, but paper towel works perfectly fine also. Remember to keep your work clean and clean up as you work. You don't want any oil in the bottom of your engine for dirt to stick to, and you also don't want any drips that are gonna make you second guess your work. That if something is tight enough or is, is coming loose,
All right, here we go, guys. Putting the skid plate back on the car. Putting one of the 8,000 T27 bolts back on. Uh, yeah, this, this, the, the uh, skid plate is very, very secure. It's, it's nice, though. I like it. I don't mind all the little bolts. You um, just want to make sure that don't <clears throat> just put them in there hand tight until you got them all in. Because say you tighten them down on one side, then the other side might not line up. So make sure all the bolts fit in there first. So here we go, ready to uh, fill the car back up with oil. I put a paper towel next to the funnel to hold it steady because the fill hole in this car is sort of large. Not all cars are like that, but for this one it is. Just make sure the paper towel is not in the way, the oil running out of the bottom. All right, guys, this car takes 5.5 quarts exactly. So the exactly part is very important because it, it, it's digital. It, it reads the oil level digitally and there's no dipstick. So you're going to put five quarts in and then half a quart. So that six quart is going to be half of that. If you have any type of hesitation, you want to be on more of a cautious side, you can always put the five and then add a little bit and check it. Add a little bit and check it until you get to that 5.5. But for me, I put the 5.5 in because I know I drained everything out. That uh, It was right on the dot. By the time I updated on the infotainment, it was right where it was supposed to be. Here's a picture of what your oil level reading looks like. All right, guys. So the physical part of oil change is done. And what you have left to do is to check the oil level. So the oil level sensor on this car is digital. It's uh, in the infotainment center. It's menu, and then it's car, and then it's uh, oil or oil level. On the monitor, it says it takes five minutes of idle to, to correct the oil level. But for me, it took two short rides. I had it sitting there idling for five minutes, for 10 minutes, for 15 minutes, it didn't update. And I went for a ride, and then I stopped, and I started again, it didn't update. Then I went for a ride, started it, uh, stopped it, started it, and then it was updated. And that goes back to what I was saying earlier in the video, that you have to make sure you have that five and a half quarts in. So it's kind of like uh, a peace of mind, because if the five and a half is in there, like it's supposed to be in there, you don't have to worry about the digital, like showing you where the oil is at. And also I'm not like 100% convinced it is really that accurate. I never thought that I would say I miss a dipstick, but I do miss a dipstick being on this car. All right, guys, that's it for my video. Um, next video, I'm probably going to do the BMC air filter. So uh, check back, subscribe, like the video. Thanks.